Good morning, and welcome to our third season of the Jack Yates Community Forum. I am Markel Davidson. And I am Nicole Rambo. And this year we'll be focusing on the changing of education. Kicking off our first show, we have with us Super Air Superintendent Dr. Rod Page. Hi, and welcome to our show. Thank you for inviting me. It's well, a pleasure. We're glad that you're here. Well, I'm, I'm pleased to be here. Dr. Page, you just completed your first year with HISD. <clears throat> what are your feelings on what you've accomplished, and what are your, some of your highlights? Well, I'm extremely proud of the accomplishments uh, over the past year. I think uh, among the highlights, I would count the decentralization initiative, which uh, reorganized the school district into 12 uh, new districts, uh, each headed by a uh, district superintendent that was carefully chosen, uh, and the policy positions and the cultural shift that's taking place uh, is something that, um, that I'm very pleased with. Uh, also, I'm pleased with the uh, attitude of uh, the students uh, and the professionals in the classroom and the support we're getting from parents. Uh, uh, that's uh, very tremendous for us. I, I guess I'm pleased most by the fact that um, I'm going to be able to release very shortly uh, some information that shows that uh, violent activity is down in our schools uh, and instructions uh, and learning is up and things are just going well and I'm very pleased about it. Uh, we'd like to congratulate you on your two-year extension to your contract. Thank you. And uh, what are your visions on the next two years for the school district? Well, first of all, I think that HISD is the best urban school district in America. Uh, it's much better than many of our large cities. I have a chance to talk and meet with uh, superintendents from big cities, Chicago and New York and L.A. and San Francisco and D.C. I wouldn't trade places with any of them. I think that we've got the best system here. But we're not nearly as good as we should be. You know, I want to decrease our dropout rate. I'd like to see our TOS performance uh, uh, increase so that all of our schools, and especially our middle schools where we're having most difficulty, uh, would improve our student performance there in, in our high schools. I would like to see more of our uh, students uh, make high scores on SAT and ACT and attend college. So what steps can we start by making these changes? Well, uh, one of the things that we can do better, I think, is staff development, and that is uh, working and providing opportunities for our professionals, the teachers uh, in the schools, to have uh, uh, opportunities, ready opportunities, to improve their skills uh, and to create a safe and orderly environment in, in the rooms, in the classrooms, and in the schools so the students will feel better about paying attention to learning and having more dialogue with students and just talking to them about the value of education and helping them understand how important it is uh, that they increase their education. Because when it gets down to the bottom line, it's a matter of how much effort students are putting in and, and, and about the quality of education that teachers are, are, are providing. So what are your set goals for the next two years? We would like to uh, increase um, the um, diversity of our teaching workforce. Uh, we would like to improve the staff development component of our, um, our teacher support system. We would like to uh, increase the efficiency and effectiveness uh, through which uh, our FMO uh, facilities maintenance operation and other areas of the non-school programs provide services to school programs so that they will get the things they need when they need them uh, and in, this, in the amount that they need them so that they can have full concentration on teaching. Last year you headed some teen forums for input. Uh, were they successful? Oh, I think so. Uh, and we're going to do that again because I think that uh, we need to hear more of what our students are saying. You know, you hear people say a lot that students are our future. Well, my attitude uh, is that students are also our presence. We shouldn't wait until the future. Students can play a part now. And the teen forum was a vehicle through which they could play a part. And we've had two teen forums so far, one uh, by the Forum Club of Houston, uh, and um, we anticipate others. Um, why has the requirements for the 1995-1996 freshmen been expanded to a 24 accredited graduating program? That's a good question. <coughs> uh, and it is in the process of being expanded. It has not yet. We'll have to have it uh, cleared by the Board of Education on the 16th of March. 
But why is a good question. And the answer is we think that um, we need to enhance our offerings in order to prepare our students for the time that they're going to live. We're not preparing students for yesterday. We're preparing students for tomorrow. We're preparing students that are going to live out in front of us. And out in front of us, we see the requirement for good communication in more than one language. We're going to be a multi-ethnic community. You know. uh, we're going to have more interaction between our northern neighbors and our southern neighbors. And language is important. It's important for our groups, different cultural groups, to understand each other better. Uh, also, technology is just continuing to speed up. And anybody who is not up on that is going to be left behind. And to be good with that, you need a better understanding of, and better skills in math and better, st better skills in science. And we wanted to provide a curriculum that would give our students the very best opportunities to be successful. And, and that's why. And by the way, uh, I have every confidence that our students can master this. It has nothing to do with talent. only has to do with effort. And if our students would put the effort forward, they'll master this with flying colors. With enhancing these offerings, you're going to need more teachers. So is the school district prepared to hire more teachers? Well, I don't know if, it, if we'll need more teachers. We'll probably need a different mix of teachers. Uh, but the number of teachers we need will be related to the number of students that we have. And we don't anticipate the student population of our district is going to increase by any significant amount. Uh, but we increased about 2,000 students a year. And so the number of teachers is not much of a problem for us. The mix of teachers, you know, we'll need more teachers in different areas. We'll need more foreign language teachers, and we'll need more teachers in math and science. We'll need more math and science facilities, and we'll need more um, 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 facilities for other activities, for, such as computer labs and things like that. And on the note of teachers, uh, teachers haven't had raises in the last three years. Uh, Last what years now? Three years. Yeah, three. Okay. Um, so do you see a raise in the future? Absolutely. In fact, uh, it's one of our first priorities for the next budget year. Um, teachers are our heroes. And it was sad that we were unable to um, provide the funding for teacher raises this current year. But in announcing the budget for this current year, I announced at that time that the following year, which will be the spring, uh, that budget preparation period will, will contain um, um, a teacher increase in salary because we respect the job that they're doing, and that, that will be our first priority. Okay, Dr. Page, what are your expectations for the 1995-1996 um, school year? Well, I expect that we'll have continued, continued refocused um, activities on teaching and learning activities. You know, I think the years uh, behind us, we focused a lot on management. We focused on, on site-based management uh, and on other kind of management activities. And I believe that we need to refocus on teaching and learning. That's what the school system is about. And everything else is there to support teaching and learning. So next year, I, I expect uh, to have an even sharper focus, a continued focus, so that it's real clear that school is about teaching and learning. Okay, so will you base your teaching and learning on the TOS test and what the teachers should well, be teaching? Well, unfortunately, the TOS test is a scoreboard that the public hangs up for everybody to decide on who wins and who loses, you know. Uh, all of us know that the TOS scores are not uh, adequate to represent the accomplishments that goes on in schools. There are many things that are not measured by the TOS uh, score. We'll have to continue to focus on TOS scores, however, because that's the way the public measures us. But at the same time, we've got to do these other things because they're the things that make students successful. Uh, back to teaching and learning. Um, I know that teaching and learning starts in the homes. How can you get more parents involved? Oh, that's a tough job. We, you know, everywhere we go, uh, we see a lot of activity aimed at getting more parents involved. I think that we're going to have to do a lot of things differently because I think the families are different. You know, I think parents are now under a different kind of stress than parents were earlier. Almost every family where there are two parents, both are working. And in, every case, in most cases where there's only one parent, you've got working there too. Uh, we've got a lot of grandparents raising, raising children, and they have a different set of needs than the traditional family would have. 
So I think that we've got to understand this phenomenon better, and we've got to construct activities that will meet the needs of parents so that we can uh, provide them with opportunities, or better opportunities, to be involved in schooling. But parental involvement, as, you, as you've indicated, does not begin necessarily at school. Mm -hmm. It begins at home. Uh, it's also uh, uh, influenced by what goes on in the community, in the neighborhood, in the church. Uh, and so there's the whole community can be involved in this. And if the whole community sees education as important, then it's much easier for us at school. Okay, Dr. Page, what is the Fulbright Teacher Exchange Program consist of? I don't know the specific details of that, but uh, we have some uh, experts at the office who can provide you with the details of that. And I'll get them to come down and give you that information so that you can show it to the rest of your students. I'm afraid if I try to detail that, I might say something that's incorrect and, and lead somebody astray. Okay. Um, the meaning of counselor is one who counsels and guides. Today, that definition doesn't seem to apply. How and what can you do about improving this situation? One of the team forums, in fact, the most recent one, uh, pointed out students' view of counseling. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and what I heard students say was that they need more interaction with counselors on a basis uh, that has nothing to do with scheduling classes and paperwork, but to be able to talk about just living type matters. Mm -hmm. Our ratio of students to counselor in the HISD is inadequate. We probably will have to have a different uh, mix of, uh, of personnel that will require additional counselors. And we'll also probably have to uh, restructure the counselors' functions so that they'll be freed up to have more interaction with students. We have a group now studying this. It's one of our peer groups that's uh, investigating uh, the counselor function, trying to find how, ways that we can improve the counseling. Okay. Okay. Um, you know that we have CIS programs in yes. schools, mm -hmm. and so do you feel that that's a source of counseling? I think CIS is one of the finest organizations that we can imagine. It's very important to our schools because it does provide that counseling function. I don't think CIS, though, can uh, take the show to show the whole burden. Uh, we uh, in the district must also uh, provide more assistance through uh, enhancing counselors' uh, ability to interact with students. But CIS is a wonderful organization. Okay. How do you feel about nurseries within schools? Well, I think that we must meet the needs of the students uh, so that they are free to come to school. Very frankly, though, I think that one of the things we're going to do a lot about, though, is our teen pregnancy problem. Uh, and I use the word problem because I think that um, the number of, uh, of uh, children who are born now uh, in unwed situations, and especially to teenagers who have real tough time taking care of them, uh, is a problem that we in our community are going to have to solve mm -hmm. uh, because that problem impacts all across the board. But we have to uh, deal with the situation that we have now. In the situation that we have now, there are many people who need assistance. And uh, although this is not a function that schools would typically be responsible for doing, in order to do our other job, we have to do a little of this. So uh, I think it's required of us to provide these kinds of facilities. I know. Uh, well, people of the generation before us, well, my parents' generation. Like my generation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. They feel that um, once a, uh, a girl becomes pregnant, she should no longer attend that school because they feel it's a bad influence for the, the girls that are not impregnated. How do you feel about this? Well, I wouldn't agree with that. You know, I think that... Um, Children and young ladies and young men should be provided opportunities to go to school. I think if, if we put barriers in front of them about schooling, it's going to create problems further down the line. You know, none of us are pleased uh, with the level of, uh, of teenage pregnancies in our community. But I don't think the solution to that is to deny them the opportunity to go to that school. Mm -hmm. um, well, before graduating from high school, we know in our sophomore year we began a process of testing and it seems that we have to take a test to graduate from high school, we have to take tests to get into college, we have to take tests once we've made it to college. Do you feel that students this, well, are now being over tested? Oh, I don't agree that students are over tested. In fact, I could think of a couple more tests I'd suggest. <laughs> Let me tell you, welcome <laughs> to the world. Uh, this <laughs> is what you are, you're going to be tested. You're going to be tested in every activity you can imagine. 
Some are paper and pencil tests. Some are not paper and pencil tests. But we're going to be tested. You're going to be tested for jobs. You're going to be tested for promotion opportunities. You're going to be tested for competition with uh, our foreign neighbors. You're going to be tested. So I think that uh, we need to step up to the bat and, and, and prepare to handle these tests. And you know what? We can. It's been demonstrated that our students can do anything they decide to do. So it's just a matter of refocusing and, 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 and with strong intent, master those tests. Are there more students now in, uh, within our district going to college and attending college? Yeah, it is growing, but not nearly fast enough. And we want more of our students to go to college. We want more of them to graduate faster uh, and take advantage of the college activity. Because college, graduating from a college, is really the cut line. If you graduate from college, you have an enhanced opportunity to be successful in society. You don't graduate from college, you've got a problem. It, it's almost an invisible line right there. In order to, to have a chance in this society, you've got to be on the other side of it. You've got to have a graduate. You've got to graduate. If you're on the other side of it and don't graduate, your chances are diminished. Well, how can we instill in the students that going to college, that the education doesn't stop after you graduate from high school? How can we instill in them? I think that we've got to bridge the gap so we can talk more to each other. I think there's not enough dialogue going on between students and adults. We've got to sit down and talk and listen uh, and, 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 and convince because uh, those of us who've had a lot of experience about this, uh, we, we have a view that we would like to share. But first of all, we got to gain, res uh, gain students' respect by uh, dealing with them earnestly. And I think the students will, will cooperate with this. I, I think that can be solved by better dialogue. Um, talking with my mother, I know that uh, within the schools that not all teachers are teaching their students what they need to know. And uh, how are you going to evaluate that kind of situation? Well, um, it is an issue that we've got to address. It's a tough issue. And what you're talking about is getting better instruction and getting better instruction through better efforts from teachers. Now, in the main, I got to say, I think teachers are America's heroes. I think that we are, uh, we have better teachers than we deserve based on how much this society puts into the teacher workforce in terms of compensation and other issues. But I think fairness would indicate that I must say that some of our teachers are not performing as well as they should. We'll have to have better evaluation systems. We need a system to distinguish between effectiveness and non-effectiveness. Uh, we need uh, ways to reward effectiveness. We need ways to uh, uh, deal with ineffectiveness. And we need uh, to be able to recruit better and also to train better in terms of, uh, in terms of staff development. These are things that we're, that we're constantly working on. And on that note, we'll go to a commercial break. And we're back with our guest, Dr. Rod Page, Houston Area Superintendent. Okay, Dr. Page, as you know, there are four groups um, of peer committees, mm -hmm. parental involvement, staff development, counseling services, and employee hearing procedures. Mm -hmm. What do these groups entail? Well, actually, there are 14 of them. Okay. And each of these groups uh, have a task of looking at that particular function and figuring out ways that it could work better. You, know, you spoke of counseling a few minutes ago, and one of the peer groups is studying counseling. And so we bring experts from the outside. We bring family, parent, people, and parents and students in, uh, and professional counselors in. And they all sit together and study the problem and, and uh, make recommendations to us on how we can improve it. 
So does this help the district? I think it's going. This is one of the finest things the district's been involved in many years. It's going to be very helpful. Okay, and with the parental involvement, um, do you have enthusiastic parents that come to you and want to work? Oh, yeah, I just yesterday I left a meeting of the PTA, the um, the PTA council for Houston area, uh, and I, I just can't imagine being around a more exciting group uh, and a group that brings more energy to the table. Those parents that are involved with us are very, very effective. Uh, the problem is we don't have enough, and we, we challenge them in the setting to ask others to come and, and, and uh, be involved. Okay. Um, as you know, we have dual credit classes in our schools now. How do you think that that's going to affect kids on college-based sources? Well, I think it provides the, the latitude that students need to, to make the kind of decisions that they make. And consequently, it should be an uh, enhancement as far as college credit is concerned. Okay, you know that kids, they really don't um, feel that college is needed because they're well, scared to get it. You, me, you know, I think, I, I, I want to ask you a uh, question. Okay. <laughs> Let's turn that question around. Okay. Why is that? I'm interested in knowing that. Why is that, that uh, most students don't believe that it's necessary? Can't, I mean, do they see different things that I see? No, but it's like because a lot of kids, like, they say, well, if I go to college, is that going to actually give me a job? I mean, am I going to have a job strapped I get out of college? And then when they don't get the job, they see other people, people fail in the college. They go to college, and then it's hard for them to get a job. So they're like, why should well, I waste my money the, to pay for college? Okay, then, but do they notice that those that don't go to college have a much, much decreased opportunity to get jobs? And for those that get jobs, the majority of them are people who have college degrees. I mean, is that, is that not... Uh, well, I feel differently. I feel that most high school students are out to get money. And they see that it's a very long, once you go through 12 years of high school, they feel like four years of high of 12, more 12 school. years of high school is a very small part of your life. Uh, and there's much more of your life out in front of you, and the quality of that life out in front of you is going to be impacted by the quality of the education. It's a very small investment based on the kind of a return that you're going to get. Well, I, that's why I, I feel most most students are afraid of that time, you know, because... Afraid, do they? I afraid mean, of that time? Afraid of that time. I mean, mm. after you graduate, I mean, your parents are about to cut you loose. Let me tell you another part of that, too, that you might want to consider. I mean, the four years you're in college is not dead time. I think four years in college was probably the most fun time I can remember. I still... Uh, uh, feel real warm about some of the experiences I had in college. Some of the friends I made, some of the things I learned, some of the people I met, some of the places I went. I mean, college is a very important, fun time, as well as a, a time that uh, enhanced you. Well, well, do you feel that more students are going to college just to have fun, mm -hmm. not, you know, to stick to the books, you know? Because once you're in college and you go off, you have a freedom, you know, that you're not used to having. When you're staying at home in high school, your mother makes you go to school when you don't want to. Well, that's the trick. College is a place where you learn uh, to uh, manage that phenomenon. You know what your main focus is, and that's learning, mm -hmm. okay? But learning is not dull. That's the point I'm making. Mm -hmm. Learning itself is fun. So I don't mean fun by going to parties and jumping up and down and yelling a lot. No, although there's opportunities for that. But it's also fun to uh, have discussions with people who know things, uh, and you learn from them, uh, and to debate ideas, and to challenge ideas, and to find new ways of doing things. That's fun. Oh, I have a question. Mm -hmm. In high school, I know that when we're, we get our schedules at the beginning of the year, of course you hear about those upcoming teachers that are to follow uh, for the next year. And I know a lot of the students, once they get a certain teacher, they, I guess they, they feel, well, she's too hard, I'm going to get out of her class and try to e take the easy way out. Yeah. I know when she gets to college, it's not that easy where you can change professors. How do you feel about that? Well, you know, the funny thing about that is uh, nothing has changed. Now that you mentioned that, I remember that uh, being discussed when I was in high school. You, know, you didn't think I could remember back that Friday, <laughs> did you? Uh, and I remember that same uh, idea in college. But you know what? I found the toughest teachers to be the most fun teachers. They're the ones who really cared about you learn. 
Uh, and when you finish and look back, uh, uh, and you get many, many years ahead of, of that, you look back and the ones you remember are the ones that were tough. Mm -hmm. and now I remember the, I could just rattle off the really tough teachers that I had in college and also in high school. And I promise you, I was benefited most by those. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, um, with your benefits in high school, high school professors, uh, teachers, and college professors, how can you just tell the students that um, it's not going to be hard? Well, let's talk struggle. about hard. I can't mm -hmm. promise that it's not going to be hard. I promise that it's going to be hard. But I promise being hard is going to be fun. Let's go. You, here at Yates, you have a wonderful football program. Mm -hmm. Do you want the football coach to be soft? No. no. <laughs> okay, he's been pretty hard, right, in terms of physical conditioning and stuff like that, right? Mm -hmm. It prepares the team, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. That's why they win, isn't it? Okay, that's why people respect Yates and respect, respect them. But it isn't easy. Suppose we get a bunch of football, a group of coaches out there and say, let's, let's have easy. Winning is hard. <laughs> work is hard. But that's good. You know, because the more you work, the harder you push, the more you grow. You can't grow with soft. Okay. So okay. I, would you feel it'd be better if high school, high school teachers were more stricter on their students now to prepare them for the, um, college? Well, you know, I don't know the word strict. I, I, I think I want to agree with the word strict, but I, let me say that I think teachers should have strong expectations of students. Teachers should demand that students learn mm -hmm. because students can learn. And I think that probably most students are like I was when I was a student. I mean, it took a little pushing to get me going, you know? And so uh, I'm sure that's the case now. But teachers that did back off, that went on and pushed me, right now I'm real proud of that. Okay, you know, a long time ago in schools they had like um, paddling and everything, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay, and yeah, and you know, in our parents' generation, people, you know, they were more enthused in going to school because of their parents and their teachers getting involved in paddling and doing other things. I mean, what's going to be our push for the students since that's out of the schools? Well, it's not completely out of the schools, but uh, we'll have to find other ways to do it. You know, uh, paddling is, is one way that discipline was achieved, but we've got to find other ways. By the way, I, I don't disagree with paddling. I think that is some, mm -hmm. that's an appropriate <laughs> time for that. Right, because, I mean, it's a lot of kids, you know, I know when I was in elementary, they still had paddling around. And we were scared of the teachers when they said, oh, if you don't do your homework, we're going to give you six pops, you know. Mm -hmm. It was like enthusiasm. And so, I mean, my mind now is like, well, at least I know mine. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, well, I'm not going to get a paddle for it. it you know, matter. all I got to do is I'll do it at school. You know, a lot of people do work at school, homework. Yeah. They want to do it at school. Your mom go home, you go home, and you know there's no studying time anymore because it's not a section set off for studying time. You say, "Oh, mama did that homework at school," yeah. and so that's why kids are not prepared for tests and everything because of that. Not going right. home and studying for maybe an hour or two. So, yeah. you, you know what? Um, this this uh, is not going to allow us enough time to finish this conversation. We got to get back <laughs> together and talk about this some more because uh -huh. that's a problem. Uh, we've got to fix it so that we do get that type of push at home and we get that type of push in the community as well as at school. Okay. You might can help us with that. So what are we going to do about our parents? far as, um, you know, we have a lot of kids, they come from broken homes. A lot of kids come from drug abuse parents. Um, I know the CIS program works with those type of kids, but a lot of those kids, in the schools don't go to the program to be helped. Yeah. So how are we going to get them off the streets from these actually coming from the broken homes and the drug addiction people? I tell you, you pose some really tough questions and I can't promise you I know the answer to all of those but I know we've got to work on those. I know what you're hitting on is, is really the tough part of the problem for schools now and schools are just different than they were years ago because those are the kinds of problems we face now. First of all, I think we've got to have the expanded CIS. You know, it's got to be bigger. I would like to say CIS at every middle school, at least, you know, and also in elementary and high school, but certainly in every middle school. And we've got to have more involved parents, and we've got to figure out a way to do that. So I know we don't have time to get into it in real detail, but it's, it's something we've got to fix. So we, can we have some more discussion on that some other time? Yes. Okay. Um, 
I know security is placed on the campuses to make the students feel more safer. But I know that sometimes situations can get out of hand, and these situations get out of hand in front of other students. How can we expect our students to feel safe if they're seeing this type of, you know, these type of things happening? You mean other students or other adults? Or? Uh, the security is uh, getting, I mean, being physically physical with the, with the students, you know. Security handling the Rough. situation is improper. Yes. Then we've got to... Um, We've got to have a better trained and, and a better uh, skilled uh, police force. Now, we think that we're making progress and our police operation is getting better, but uh, you're indicating that there's still a lot to be done. Uh, so we'll continue to work on the professionalization of our police officers. Now they are sharper, they look better, they're better trained, they, they have better skills, but uh, it's not time to declare victory. We've got to do more. Do you foresee a better relations with the with HISD and the media? I certainly hope so. I certainly hope so. Because the media is a very important uh, institution in our community because it provides information with people. And it's extremely important that they provide accurate information. And I, th I think it's also important that media prods and expose things that are wrong. So mm -hmm. I don't challenge that at all. But I am disappointed, I'll be frank to, be frank to tell you about the, uh, the accurate accuracy of a lot of the reports and many of them uh, don't 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 put, put the whole picture out there and I think that's a disservice to the community um, well I know that it's really bad because I know that when certain situations happen at a school the media rushes out to to videotape maybe the bad situation the right. but there's so much positive going on within the school district how can we get them to come out and see all the positive well, that's, uh, that's precisely the problem and one of the things is we'll have to do what we'll have to do better and that is provide this kind of information and also provide access to them uh, to get this kind of information but I think um, uh, even at that um, the motivations are quite different than our motivation. So we're going to have to find ways ourselves to put this positive picture out better, such as what's you're, what you're learning here. And we'll have to uh, look at the, our student newspapers and also our television channel and, and other vehicles to get our word out. I don't think we can ever depend uh, on the media to uh, tell the positive side of the district because they're selling news. And, and the positive side just doesn't seem to sell as well as some of the other. Do you have any last words for our viewing audience? Yeah, I do, and, uh, but it's targeted primarily at students. I think whether we're good or bad is basically the attitude that students take. First of all, our students are fully capable of mastering any challenge that's put before them. It's only a matter of whether they decide that it's important enough for them to put the effort there in order to master it. Every student at Yates and all of our other schools can master the TOTS, they can master the SAT and ACT, and they can get good grades and go to college. If they don't, it's a matter of deciding not to because it, there's only one thing that's required, and that's effort. Talent, ability, all that push aside, effort is what we need. We'd like to thank you for coming and sharing all, right. all of your points and advice for us. Well, I enjoyed it. <laughs> and we'd like to have you back.